Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the How I Feel About Love Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation How I Feel About Love. Recorded on the 20th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Well, everyone's relieved, fed, watered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now what we've come to is our first Q and A session. So, so basically, you've got 55 minutes. 53 minutes <laughs> to uh, ask me questions about the presentations this morning and uh, and I'm happy to answer questions associated specifically with what we've covered so far so far away people if we start with Eloisa and then we'll come down to Orlean do you need me to stay in Connie? Um, I just had a question about the God, this last bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel that about my parents yes. pretty strongly. Yep. I've got some confusion with my stuff with God, because obviously I'm not connected to God. Yep. I have more curiosity about God now, but I still feel distanced from God. So am I just lying to myself that I don't feel all these things towards God or is it more that I just haven't emotionally worked through these things with my parents yet and so that's still causing the thing yeah that we talked about this Kathleen and uh, and is it Karen asked exactly the same question in the oh, break sorry. and and yeah it's a great question yes the problem is that that while you have distance distance the concept between God and your parents you're yet to rele release the emotions relating to your parents, which cause you to feel the distance with God still. Yeah, because I don't, I don't really know who God is or what God is. Yep, like and, and you may even be, you know, like at times I notice you're excited about learning about God and so forth, which is exactly what they stated. But, but the reality is, while you do not deal with the emotions relating to the family of origin, yes. you will still have these disconnects with God. Yes. And that's why it's so important to work through this emotionally. Yes. So remember, remember, I think it was point number three in my introductory portion of, la of the last segment. I mentioned that it's very, very important to process through things emotionally. Yes. Right? This is, this is, uh, this is the secret to growth, in fact. So you want to process emotionally the blockages. You, you can't... You just can't have intellectual realizations without emotional work. And, and the emotional work has to be done, but it has to be done in truth with the person or the memory related to the person with regard to who that particular emotion or how that particular emotion entered you. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah and there's no point blaming God when God didn't do anything. No. But again, I still have this emotional distance from God, so that's what I need to do. Yes, yep. and, and bear, be aware too that um, many of these things are like, they, are, they do come off in like, you know, like the New Age concept of onion layers and things like that. Like they, they are like that emotionally. There are emotions at this point in time that you can bear and God knows you can bear and work your way through and God's trying to lead you to those specific emotions first, right? Um, and then there are emotions that are deeper than that that are going to be require a lot more emotional uh, willingness for emotional intensity that you're currently not prepared for, which, which you cannot actually process until you're prepared emotionally to go through that kind of overwhelming experience. And, and so it's going to be a growing emotional expansion yeah. that occurs so and this you'll find this applies to all of your emotions so there are times when you will actually work through a whole group of emotions think 
you may think you've dealt with it and my feelings nowadays is uh, I don't feel I've ever dealt with anything completely because there's still more to go yeah. and, and I'm realising that as I deal with that one thing another thing comes exposed that I wasn't aware of before then that I need to then work my way through. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, and the reason why I wasn't aware before then is because I was not emotionally prepared to be overwhelmed to that degree. Yes. Right, yes. to experience that emotion. Yes. Right. So, so um, in the spirit world, what happens when you arrive in the spirit world and if you want assistance in the spirit world, what will happen is that people who are assisting you will only tell you your next emotion. Ah. They will not tell you anything else. And that's what God's trying to do, hey, like, so, because I'm starting to, like, go, all right, you know, like, trying to long for God's love, and I just get, like, another whammo, and yep. then I'll, like, you know, go, oh, this is useless sometimes. So, and God, I'll, in that process, God's trying to just show you this particular thing is stopping you now, right at this moment. And it's the next thing you need that's to do. That's the next thing. Yeah. And that's the way God works, and it's also the way spirit world works, but see, but see your fear doesn't want you to work that way. No. What you want is the answers to everything before you deal with anything. <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. The majority of people are like that, right? On earth, they want the answers to everything before they deal with anything. And the problem with that is you finish up dealing with... Nothing. Nothing. Anything worse. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, it's really good if you can get used to this concept that God's always trying to lead you to the, the next thing and the next thing is God's already attempting to expose for you all you need to be able to do is recognize it and process it yeah. right and the spirits around you are also trying to do the same thing with you yeah. right and the reason why they do it that way is because they know that that's the thing that's the very next thing that needs to be addressed yeah. and if you address that particular thing then there's a thing after that that you'll have expanded enough to address you follow? It's just having the courage to keep going and yeah. trusting. To trust the process until it's done. Yeah. You'll know when it's done because you'll be at one with God when it's done. Yes. <laughs> right? So you'll know when it's done. And if you're not at one with God, it's not done. done. <laughs> <laughs> and you just need to understand that. So, so, so I, I don't go, oh, yeah, I've only got five more to go and I, I'm there. You know? <laughs> That's not how I feel at all. I, I know that there's things that I am completely unaware of right at this point in time, emotionally, inside of me, that I have not yet expanded emotionally enough to deal with, yeah. that I need to expand emotionally enough to deal with, and God's already showing me what those things are. It's just my, whether I'm willing to feel about them right now or not. Yeah. Hmm. A big problem, eh? So pass across to Catherine next year. I don't feel like everybody else did about God. I feel God is very loving and beautiful. Yes. And can you remember how you feel, felt though before you processed all your stuff with your mum? Well, I don't think I've processed it all yet. And why I I um why I fe feel that is because. Um, uh, I was just so pleased when I found out that God was really my mother and father. Yeah. And my mother and father weren't, <laughs> they just gave me this body. They didn't give me, yeah. and all my injuries, they didn't give me anything else. Yes. And, but I but, still but can I say, haven't. Can sorry. I say something to you though, Catherine, about mm -hmm. it? The reality is your mum was never somebody who was nice to you. No. Never. No. She, she was abusive constantly, as you know, and this is emotions you're working your way through, right? Yes. So it was a relief for you to discover that God wasn't the same as your mother. Yes. Right? Now, that does not, of course, mean, though, that you have not had to address emotions that cause you to block, that are blockages with God. That's exactly right. Yep. That's what I was going to say. Yep. Say that I still haven't got that relationship with God because I still haven't gone through all the emotions of my childhood. Well, you've got a developing relationship with God, is what I, how I would put, put it, <laughs> right? Yes. In the sense that you recognise that God is not that being who's an all nasty and cruel like your mother was, no. and in, for, for the audience's uh, benefit, 
Catherine's mother was a very cruel person towards Catherine, very abusive, and also, and her father was also sexually abusive, so she had uh, it from both parents. And so, of course, you know, there's quite a lot of emotion there that Catherine needs to work her way through. And fear is one of the primary emotions that mm -hmm. you've had to work yeah. your way through, which, which you have done a lot of work on already, so, which is very, very good. But, but the reason why you don't associate the two is because you love the concept that God's not like your mum and dad. Yes. Right? But you've got to be very careful that you don't then convince yourself that that means that you have a completed relationship with God while... No. Yeah, and I know you don't. But while you have these other emotions still yet to address. Yes, yes. The reality is it's very difficult for you to trust anybody. Yes, I don't. Very few. Yes. And, and the reality, and understandably so, given the background, but, but that lack of trust is imposed upon God. You don't really trust God yet fully no, either. That, yes. Right? So there's an emotion, as an example of an emotion, where, where you are imposing, because of the, the, the untrustworthy behaviour of your parents, that you are imposing that emotion upon God. Does that make sense? Right. So there are emotions you are imposing upon God still. Yes from this relationship with your family of origin, which are impeding your relationship with God, even though you currently believe God to be better than your family of origin. Oh, unbelievably better. Yeah. But there's still a lack of trust of it. Yes. That, and that, and that's, yes. that's the thing that you need to allow yourself to work your way through. Like I'm saying is, in this previous presentation that I just did, and we could have discussed that for five hours, by the way, because there was enough enough things I could have said there that we could have gone on all day. But <clears throat> in that previous presentation, the, th the, the thing I'm getting across to each of you is that the source of all truth and the source of all love, of anything that's higher than your own education, is God. So it's the, it, there's, there's a very great need for each of us to focus firstly on our blockages with God. Now, all of our blockages with God are tied up in our blockages with our family of origin. Right? Now, some of them you've released with God, but not with your family of origin. Right? So in other words, Catherine doesn't believe God's abusive and cruel. Right? And then there's others that we, haven't, that we do associate with both our family of origin and with God. In other words, Catherine believes that she can't trust anybody, and unfortunately, God's still in that category, yes. right? So, so we know, we've got to understand that we're, that even though we may not have these particular opinions about God, our family of origin is certainly impacting upon our opinions about God. Does that make sense? Yes. And, and therefore, we the like it's very important to work through those particular things with our family of origin because that will get rid of the problems with God and the faster you get rid of the blockages between you and God means the faster that you can actually receive God's love and receive God's truth and actually develop this relationship with God yes because that's what I haven't got at the moment yeah well I feel you have got a developing relationship with God you, you certainly have much more faith for example that if you deal with fear that things improve for you and that that's a degree of trust but, yes. but there's still further degrees to develop, of course. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, Lorleen, you've been waiting for ages. Go on. Um, I think you've just answered um, the question I had, both yep. Eloisa and Catherine. I have similarities, except I haven't quite dealt with much of my things. Yep. But in addition to that, um, I get confused because, and I think it's been answered, but it's about if I think that there is no God, it terrifies me. I get really scared and um, I just... So you need to go there. Right. Mm. It's, it's not because I'm trying to push a responsibility on God because I want someone to be... Well, unless you go there and go into the emotion, it's highly unlikely you're going to work out why it is that you get terrified if God doesn't exist. Do you understand? God's... Um, God w wants you to be free of terror of any kind, including free of the terror that God doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. 
So it's important to go there emotionally. I can't emphasize enough, unless you go to places emotionally, they, you won't understand why they're there. You will not. And you'll guess in your head, you know, many times, many of you try. I, I hear you having conversations with each other where you're guessing a lot of things and most of the time not correct because you, you're basing your guesses upon your own emotional injured state. And, and of course, that state's not very good at guessing the truth. So it is a problem that needs to be resolved. Deal with things emotionally. Go, let yourself go to the place emotionally and you will work through why that particular emotion exists of fear. And you, you do have a lot of fear and, um, and, a, and, and a lot of it is multi-generational, as you know. Uh, related, you know, the, the background, your background is such that there is not a clear definition of God at all in, in, in the history of your life and, and, and in the history of your forebears. And as a result of that, uh, it's very, very, you know, they all believe that there is no such thing as God and you're just relying, you're relying on a concept that's not even true. And they believe that even though they've passed. So, yeah. Um, okay, if we go to Jennifer and then across. Yep. Um, thank you. I know that I have, um, when I do have a strong desire, I can like pray and receive um, an answer to my prayer. Oh, sorry. Uh, I can receive an answer to my prayer. Yep. Do you um, need her to stand up, uh, Connie? Yep, no? Right. Yep. Okay. Um, but then it's like when I do the exercise of God, please let um, show me that you love me, that you exist, that questioning. And then I go into doubt. So it's, what's God just shown you? God showing me that there is a wisdom in the world that comes from a higher source. Uh, no, I see. Hold see, hold in that situation, I feel, Jennifer, what, what, what God's showing you is that there's a lot of doubt in you. Oh, sorry. And, yeah, yeah. and you need to True. experience that emotionally before you will actually work your way through it. Does that make sense? Yes. D doubt doubt is, a, is a funny emotion. Because doubt is an emotion that causes you to not act. When you doubt things, you can't act, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's an excuse-based emotion. So, so whenever, whenever you have this emotion of doubt with God, then you need to work through what, why you want to have doubt with God. Because doubt is a selected excuse-based emotion. You understand what I mean by that? Um, you want to doubt. Right? Your mind wants okay. to doubt. All right. So you've got to find out the emotional reason why. Because mm -hmm. it comes from an emotion somewhere. All right, it probably relates to, because the other thing that happens, other than doubt, is that I need things to be tangible. Mm -hmm. I need to see and touch. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, um, when I receive the answer, I run the other way. Mm -hmm. They're all related to your doubt, yep. actually. Yeah. yeah, I feel that's the case, mm. yeah. Okay, you've answered my question then. <laughs> well, I haven't answered it. Oh, <laughs> I sorry. want you. <laughs> I haven't answered it purposely. I want you to go back over those three sets of emotions mm -hmm. and really feel about them because mm -hmm. they, uh, your doubt is being caused by a group of emotions that you are unwilling to feel and you'd prefer to be in doubt than feel them. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. See, see, a lot of our emotional work is about... Um, Instead of choosing emotions we prefer to have, we need to get to the real core of, of things. We need to get to the core emotions. And, and what I'm seeing many of you do is you choose to feel one thing because you want to avoid a whole heap of other more truthful things. And in fact, you even choose to create an emotion that's actually a complete figment of your creation and imagination in order to avoid a whole heap of truthful emotional processing work, right? And doubt is one of those things. So I need to look at what I'm trying to avoid. Yes. Yep. Well, that'll be. And whenever nice you moment. pray, it yeah. gets triggered. And that's why I want to run away. Correct. Yeah. So let yourself go back, pray, 
let yourself feel what gets triggered let yourself feel the emotion that's underneath the doubt rather than think oh i've just you know i'm 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 praying to an imaginary person now or whatever it is that you doubt you follow me yes yeah thank you yeah we've got to be very careful at the reason why if you think about about it this way our mind is a tool that is subservient to your heart your soul is a tool now if your soul says i don't want to have to act because that acting scares me silly like for example if i'm in a relationship with somebody and they've uh, I, they've done something that i feel i need to speak up about but i know if i speak up about it, it they're probably going to leave the relationship and i don't want them to leave the relationship so i've got a lot of fear about them leaving the relationship if i speak up so what what's my mind what's my soul want my soul wants security over truth in that situation right safety over truth so what do i do i don't tell them anything i've got my safety right I've got my safety the soul has determined the soul my feelings have determined and my feelings being i want safety above all else i don't care whether i'm in a lie with my partner i want to feel safe that's my underlying feeling so what i what do i feel in my heart i want safety above all things so what's your mind going to help you do be safe above all things justify to yourself that position so your mind's going to say it's pointless telling him right uh, he might not have done it and then i'll just create a terrible problem he, you know he's going to get angry so i don't really want his anger so i won't do it or and it, and it can come up with a hundred different explanations if you want it to all to justify the underlying soul based choice which is i just don't want to feel unsafe do you follow Now all of those other things that are manufactured by the mind you can go off and process and it won't do anything because they're all false because you're unwilling to face the truth which is what's really going on inside of your heart I'm scared stiff and I just don't want to feel that in the example I gave does it make sense yeah now who was next uh it was Louise um when I was very little I gave up on my parents and looked to my siblings who were only very young as well mm -hmm. um as my parents and um how old uh, what's the age difference between your siblings and yourself um well my older sister died she was a couple of years older than me so right. I remember looking up to her when I was 3 as my parent because which is ridiculous now i can see that uh, not really what happens with a lot of in a lot of families of origin is you have your parents who who uh you know mum and dad who don't take on the role of parenting the baby or the child and if you have an older sibling uh so let's say there's an older so here's your drawer address on you sorry about that and and here's an older sibling uh, a, a woman as well isn't it, i gather yep. yeah older sister sister and brother yeah yep. um so you got older siblings now when these particular parents don't fulfill the role of being a parent this child will look to these particular people as their parents as a result and so what finishes up happening is you finish up imposing yeah. a lot of the unhealed emotional stuff with your parents upon in other in other words the things the parents don't supply you want your siblings to supply yeah. Yeah. and then of course there's a whole heap of demands that are placed upon your siblings and then uh, and they become your surrogate parents in reality right and then of course their belief systems and all of their like all of their treatment of you and everything else becomes your reality about god yeah well, my question was like um i having a lot of trouble longing for god's love i try i sort of try and do it intellectual process of wanting god's love but the emotions not really there is that because of all this if you're having trouble longing for god's love then to, then the real reality is you don't want god's love so you'd be better off feeling why you don't want it oh, okay. now usually under those circumstances is because we feel love is in, is an imposition it's it's demanding it's controlling in fact you mentioned demanding i think wasn't it or one of those words anyway in the previous oh yeah yes yeah. sadistic and that's right yeah. so 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 these are belief systems that have been established probably in these relationships 
that have caused you to believe that about God, the, the, the feeling you need to start with is, I don't want God's love. Right? If, you're not, if you're asking for God's love and not receiving it, you obviously don't want it. And if you don't want it, then be honest about why you don't want it. And for most people, they believe God's going to take them over, going to control them, going to demand things of them, going to cause them to do things they don't want to do, and so forth. They don't see any happiness in the relationship. All they see is trauma. Right? And that's why they don't ask for God's love. So at the moment, that's where Mary is. Like all Mary sees it with her relationship with God is trauma. Because, because to have a relationship with God, she's got to remember her entire first century life. Now, her entire first century life was terrible, right? So, so all she sees the relationship with God is doing is causing a whole heap of trauma. You understand? Even and though, like, I feel in my relationships, you know, um, I'm just longing for love. Um, no, no, you're addictively desiring love, okay. which is not longing for love. Okay. You, you want the addiction. <laughs> which you mean? Which is? A nice feeling or that I'm a, a pr approved of. To you, what is love? Being approved of. Being approved of. So, so, so what, what you really want is somebody to approve of you. Yeah. Right. Love is a gift. While you want somebody to approve of you, you're not accepting a gift. You have a demand and they have a responsibility. You understand? That's not love. That's the earth's definition of love, but it's not God's. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So, so you want God, you desperately want God to make you feel good about yourself. Yes. Right. Which is an addiction. Oh, okay. Which God can't fulfill. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he wants you to work through the emotion. Just cry about the fact you don't feel good about yourself. Yeah, okay. That's what he wants you to do. Cry about that. Release this terrible sadness that you have that you don't feel good about yourself, right? Yeah. Then you'll be able to be loved and not see it as a demand that you have upon another and a responsibility on their part. You'll feel God's love as a gift. You, you remember in the channeling that uh, myself and Mary did before the group with Sonia, and she talked a lot about this attitude towards gift, well, about a gift. If you have an expectation, you can't receive a gift. It's not a gift anymore because you d demanded it and then got something. And so you only got what you felt you justly deserved. You follow me? Now, it, it, my suggestion is if you have these issues with, with God, go back over that particular um, channeling because it, it will help you understand the difference between someone giving you their love as a gift, which actually you can't earn, and which actually won't make you feel anything other than just loved, right? So it's not going to make you feel approved or accepted or any other thing. It's going to just make you feel loved, right? And, and instead, work your way through this process of why it is that you have demands associated with love. A person who loves me would, you know, and it's great to finish those kind of sentences. A person who loved me would... What? would sacrifice for me or the person who loved me would make me feel good about myself or you know finish the sentence you know and and my a person who loved me would do what for you write all that down there's all your addictions <laughs> Thank you. do you understand yeah. and those addictions are preventing the flow of love see god can't give love to a person who just wants an addiction meant because that's not love anymore god's trying to teach you what love is and if God, let, if God allowed the flow of love into you while you wanted that addiction met, then you're learning a bad lesson about love, right? And God can't do that. God's not going to teach you something that's wrong about love. God, God wants to teach you that you're loved no matter how bad you feel about yourself. God wants to teach me that I feel loved. That God loves how, you no matter how bad yeah. you feel about yourself. Yeah. yeah. You can feel rotten about yourself or really great about yourself and either way God loves you. All right? God doesn't want you to get the concept that God's love is going to make all your bad feelings go away. Okay. God wants you to be responsible for your feelings and feel them. That's how they're going to go away. Okay. That's the truth, right? Yeah. The only way for your bad feelings to go away is by your feeling of them. Yeah. Right? The only reason why they exist in you right now is because you haven't felt them. Mm. Something, something happened during your childhood and upbringing that caused you to believe that you couldn't feel them. 
right? Many legitimate things, but now you're an adult. You can feel them, right? But you still have those beliefs from childhood that you can't, right? So just need to feel the emotion of feeling bad about myself. Um. And feel about why you feel bad about yourself. Yeah, okay. And I find allow yourself to feel what you feel, which is bad about myself, and then allow myself to ask myself the question, why do I feel bad about myself? <laughs> right? And then feel about that. The why is very important because it would tell you a lot about your family of origin. So that you know, there'll be a lot of stuff to do with the way my parents treated me. Yeah, they, they were just distant, right? Weren't they? They weren't parents. Well, they didn't love me at all. No, you, you were just a... Uh, well, you were uh, in position. Yeah, because my sister di was dying and they... In fact, I think I felt they hated me, really. Yeah, honest. but even if they didn't, they didn't really treat you like they wanted you. Oh. Right. Which is why you desperately want someone to want you. Yeah. But I mean, I've just had a relationship with someone and ended it because he, he was being, didn't go through with his divorce and with this other woman. And I felt that was a good thing to say, well, look, go and sort that out. But maybe was yeah, well, it was demanding of me? Or? Well, no, I was definitely right. He should sort out his yeah. previous relationship. He before was, he was, <laughs> was fearful of women and standing up to women. So that's why he never sorted it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he needs to sort it out. But... but and you, you certainly did the right thing there by saying, well, hang on a sec, go and sort that out, and then we'll look at having yeah. a relationship. But at the end of the day, you do want him to want you. And partly the reason why it upsets you that he didn't sort it out is because it demonstrates to you that he didn't really want you fully. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even though you're saying, I Even love you so much. Yeah. Mm. He doesn't love you enough to deal with a very minor thing, really. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you can feel that, right? Mm. Yeah, but you've got to be careful there. You're not testing the guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, to me it seems minor, but because of his fears of women and standing up to women... Honestly, no, notwithstanding his fears, it's a minor thing. <laughs> yeah, well, to me it seems minor. It's not like you're going to get murdered or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a minor thing, right? See, many of the things you're terrified of are minor things. You've got to stop telling yourself that they, you know, that they are any any significance whatsoever. What what I'd love to do sometimes is grab you, take you to the first century for a week. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd see some things that are a bit more than minor things. Yeah, Sheridan, can we just go next door? I have a similar issue about longing for God's love, mm -hmm. like that I don't have a sincere feeling to long for it. Mm -hmm. And then I have a false belief that it's impossible to receive. No, see, that's the belief you've constructed to oh. justify your not longing for it. Okay. There's a real, some real reasons why you're not longing for it. What are they? I don't know. I just I feel like I've won't get it or how it will make me feel or I'm not sure well have a have a consideration about how you viewed a relationship with Steve I should get what I want exactly mm, so that God should love me and also if 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 you don't get what you want from Steve what happens what I'm do you feel really angry yeah mm. yep so I'm really angry with God well he doesn't give you exactly what you want that's what you're afraid of Mm. You don't want to long for something and then not be given something because you, 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 want to, you want to be guaranteed that you're going to get what you long for. Yes. So, so isn't that a pretty strong demand? Yes. So Do you I, think God's going to respond to it? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> so I give up then. Like... No, you give up because you don't want to face the addiction. You don't want to face the fact that you just want what you want and you don't care about how the other person feels about giving it. Mm -hmm. You just want to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So you're unwilling to face the selfishness of that particular equation, mm -hmm. which I've talked about you with you a few times before. Yes. And you've been just as unwilling then. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a continual problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're not going to receive God's love until you work through that particular issue. Okay. Yeah, God's, God's exposed it to you many times, even in your relationship with Steve. It's God's exposing it to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Thank you. 
So the key is to say, okay, God's trying to teach me something here. <laughs> I'm trying to, God's trying to educate me and I'm going, no, 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 I want what I want. I want to receive love without having to, what? Give it. Isn't that how you've established your relationship with your partner as well? You want to receive love without having to expose your own heart and give it? Yes. So you're in a mode of protecting your heart? Yes. Yep. Yep. And this is what you want to do with God? And God's saying, no, no, no. Relationships are two people not protecting their heart. Mm. And that feels really scary. That's what you don't want to work your way through. Does that make sense? That's the fear that you don't want to deal with. Because it feels so scary. If you open your heart to somebody and what happens? If I say, if you open your heart to somebody, what's going to happen? And you will say... I'll be destroyed. Yeah. That's how bad it is for you. You feel it's a life and death matter. If you open a heart to somebody, you're going to get destroyed. That's how you feel. Yep. And that's the emotion you're preventing. Yep. So you don't, the, reality, the real feeling coming from you is, I don't want to open my heart to God. If I open my heart to God, I'm just going to get destroyed. I'll lose myself. I won't know who I am anymore. And this is the reason also why you don't open your heart to your man. Same, same reason. And God's kind of trying to show you. And God, so God can't give you love under those circumstances. God can only just show you. Hang on a sec. You try and ask for love, but you, you don't want to open your heart and give any. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, who is next? If we go to Josh up the back there. <coughs> How am I going? Time, pretty good. 11.40. Hang on a sec. Just let me work out my time. All right, we've got 18 minutes. Okay, Josh. Is it possible to know something and then unknow it? No. So it's not possible? No. Is it it possi- is possible to have an intellectual realisation of something and then forget it, right. which, which is very frequent. But is it possible to begin a process of learning something from God, for example, mm-hmm. and then not complete the process and then therefore not know of course of course that's possible yeah but you have an experience of what what could be yeah what often happens i notice people have have happened is they have an experience with god it challenges them in some way emotionally they then choose to close down that particular emotional process and as a result the emotional process doesn't complete and as a result of that, the whole thing needs to happen again. Mm. Right? It's far faster and better for you to actually allow these emotional processes to complete. And, and that requires you being stretched emotionally. It's like you know, getting a rubber band and pulling it apart. You know? That's how you feel, like you're getting really stretched apart. And you need to let yourself go through that process emotionally to the end. Now, like I said to Eloisa earlier, you may not complete everything, but, but it'll only be the things you complete that you actually now know. Intellectually, anything else is just going to disappear from you. You follow? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, yep. I agree. The soul, yeah, that's what happens, isn't it, Josh? Like, so, so your soul has this, um, will only have an understanding when two processes have, uh, have worked. So if you, you imagine here's your soul. You remember you're a half of a soul. And imagine the processes are this. You have to first release the, the hurt emotion. And you have to accept the truth about the situation, right? Emotionally. Right? So the reality is you can release the hurt without accepting the truth and you'll accept another thing, depending on other emotions that exist within you. That can also happen. The key is to release the hurt and be able to accept the truth from God. It, as, as the hurt releases, frequently it happens, but it, but it will certainly happen afterwards if you have a desire for it to occur. But for the majority of people, they don't allow that process to complete because they don't allow the hurt to be released completely. So, you know, if, the, if, if partial hurt is released, what, what's going to happen with truth? It can only be partial, can it? 
because because there's a whole heap of preclusive things occurring in the soul that stop it from being completed right and so you might find this is a process over years sometimes depending on the level of resistance emotionally that you have where you release a bit accept a bit release a bit accept a bit release a bit accept a bit and so forth i just have to say that um i felt like going into a process a number of years ago with god yep um I felt a capacity to go much further. Yep. Um, and a lot of disappointment and. Yeah, well, your, your big issue is self responsibility, Josh. Remember, I've talked to you about that. You want somebody else. I know. I, I look at all the role models and try to be like them pretty much, just to avoid taking responsibility for my own choices. Yeah, you also want uh, and other people, and particularly women to um, make it all easy for you, right? To, 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 um, you don't want to take full self-responsibility for all your emotions. You want somebody to share them with you. You, you want a daddy or a mummy. Yep. And, and that is, it comes That's what I've seen God as, like, initially, I thought... Yeah, but it's God. an addiction. It's not a... See, I see God as my daddy and mummy, but not in the way that God is going to take responsibility for all my life. Oh, I realise yeah, that I'm a self responsibility being. I look back to when I first came across Divine Truth. Yep. And I, I sort of viewed God as someone who would actually care for me physically and things like that. And that's the big addiction that creates this disappointing feeling when I'm realising that, yeah. no, it's not like that. It's no, God's trying to teach you how to become a self responsible adult, which means as a self responsible adult, you have the power to create everything you need yourself. Yeah, and I, I strongly believe I can't do that with a relationship. Exactly. I have that's, to do it God's way. I'm that's why you have the addiction of wanting other people to share in the process with you all the time, to other people to approve what you do and things like that. Yeah. Yep. yep. Makes sense? So th that, that interferes with your relationship with God. So God's saying, Josh, I want you to be a self-responsible adult. You want me to be responsible for you. <laughs> And God's going, no, I don't want to be responsible for you. I want to teach you the happiness and joy that comes from you being responsible for yourself. And you're going, but no, no, no. Responsible for myself means that nobody loves me and nobody cares about me. You, you've got a linkage between somebody being responsible for you and them loving you. Do you understand? You believe that when somebody respons takes responsibility for you, it means they loved you. It doesn't mean that, but you believe it does. Uh, and that's what you want. You you want your definition of love satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. And God's not going to satisfy it because God's definition of love's higher. God's definition of love is no. People who love are actually self-responsible beings who who actuate through their own self-free will and they live in harmony with love all the time. They don't wait for other people to share with them, to do things for them or anything like that. They are fully self-responsible beings. That's what a person who loves is like. Right? And you're going, no, no, no. You've got basically an argument with God, right? You're going, no, 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 it's not like it is. How it is, is that if you, if you really loved me, you'd take responsibility for my life. <laughs> so you and God are in an argument. Yep. Yep. Agree. Who's winning uh, the argument? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel like you are at the moment, I gather. No. 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 So, and, and this is what I find for the majority of you. The majority of you are in this argument regarding the definition of your own concept of love. Do you follow? You, you, you're basically in this fight with God going, no, my definition of love is better than yours. And, and God's going, no, sorry, that's not true. And you're going, no, it is true. It is true. My definition of love is better than yours. I have a higher viewpoint of love than you do. You're a cruel being, actually. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what you're doing, right? And, and God's going, hang on a sec, what did you just say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're a cruel being. You're a cruel being. Because my definition of love is the highest in the universe. <laughs> uh, my definition of love is so good that, that I can tell God what to do. And that's how most of you feel, actually. Now, do you think you're going to be receiving God's definition of it or God's education about love under those circumstances? Obviously not. Right? So this is, this is something we need to address.
need to address this this fight that we have with God about how we define love is actually caused by our own desire to hold on to our own definition of love for some reason whether that be an arrogant reason or a pain related reason now in your case Josh I've had this thing of all I know that all I know is that I know nothing so I apply that I've applied that to my experience and that I've used that as an excuse to but even that's not a truth nobody knows nothing well you know I'm just coming from that that's something my dad always used to say I know it's this is what I'm saying it's a Socrates, hurt. Yeah. it's a hurt feeling coming from your father like I've met your father he projects at you all the time that you're useless and you know nothing and and all of the choices that you're making are nowhere near what you could be doing with your life right he's constantly like that like I understand why it's there but it's not true and when are you going to start seeing that it's not true and just process the fact that your dad feels that way rather than still believing it's true so that you don't have to process how your dad feels about you i just get all confused like because no I'm can not you, you understand what i just said Do, does everyone get what i just said we choose to avoid the process of emotion so for reasons and this is what i'm suggesting to you you would rather believe that you're nothing which is actually your father's definition of you then you would have the confrontation in emotionally inside of yourself of feeling your way through the fact that you're not nothing now while you believe you're nothing are you in harmony with God's viewpoint of you well I've I have cried a lot about feeling like I'm nothing but in the no, past but it's not the feeling you see this is what I'm saying it's it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a never-ending feeling you're not nothing you're saying whenever you cry you're feeling like you're nothing you're not nothing the reason why you're not processing through it emotionally is because you're not accepting the truth that you're not nothing you're actually something from because God's I prefer that you prefer that because that prevents you you're basically just accepting your daddy's treatment of you over and over and over and over again every time you cry about being nothing you're accepting your dad's definition of you every time and God's going don't do that anymore Josh well I have stopped I haven't done that for number of years I know I know but this is what when we met you were really into that right yeah that, yeah. that went on for a, a went year, on for ages a year and the reason why it went on for ages is because you wanted to not have to feel the pain of how your dad actually treats you I feel angry about it I, I see it and I, just, oh, I agree you're angry about it but you still haven't felt the pain of it not processed but I no. feel I feel so, I feel hurt about it yeah but I no, haven't processed it haven't actually no. grieved it no, <laughs> no that's right yeah yeah you'd rather feel you're nothing than grieve it actually yeah it scares me a lot that yeah process. that emotion it's going to be a powerful emotion but honestly Josh once you work your way through it your relationship with God will change tremendously because instead of imposing this viewpoint that you're nothing on your relationship with God you'll actually feel some worth inside of yourself and feel like no God can love me I, you know I have worth and value which is exactly how God feels about you I sometimes feel like I miss God because you know the times where you really seek God you do receive whether it be from spirits or but you, you receive you feel loved because you're seeking and you're opening and I, I feel <laughs> like um, yeah but I just feel like I miss God can you feel you're now entering an addiction with me uh, yes as soon as you say that so what's the addiction you're entering with me um, probably <laughs> probably about approval and what else um, what do you want from me I've got a blank what do you want from your dad I want him to to love me basically well no be more specific what do you want from him so your so, definition uh, of love is way off beam so don't call it love but what do you want from him <laughs> yeah um, I want him to approve of me ah yes what else this is along the lines um, I want him to care like yes care I want him to know me you want him to reassure you that everything's all right don't you yeah yeah so that's what you're wanting from me now so all you're doing is transferring your emotions with your dad onto me okay now can I do that no nope. why because you love me 
Where, and it, because it would be feeding your addictions, and I can't do that. So, okay. so we need to finish the conversation and move on. No worries. You understand what I said to you, though. You need to re-listen to when you see this. Yeah. I'll, when you see this, uh, uh, when it comes out on a video. Yeah. Yeah. But thank it's you really for important for you. Go straight next door, Cheryl. Sorry to Cheryl behind. Yeah. I, sh I'd just like to have a clarification on that difference between. Josh feeling um, crying because he feels he's unworthy versus. Can I clarify? Yeah. Yep. Many people say to me, oh, but I just feel unworthy. I just cry about that a lot. I feel unworthy. I'm going, sorry, but you're not actually processing an emotion. You know what you're processing? False belief and you're not even processing it you're living in it you're living in false belief that's what you're doing now if you live in a false belief you that's not processing anything and processing emotion is required before you release something if you live in a false belief you are actually reinforcing it this is why it never goes away for the people who do this. It will never go away. It can never go away because you're not facing up to the reason why you feel unworthy, which is how I've been treated by somebody. A person doesn't get to feel unworthy for no reason. You understand? So how I f if I feel unworthy, it's because of how I've been treated. The way to, to resolve an issue of unworthiness is to actually work through how I've been treated. So the answer is that if I feel unworthy, I shouldn't sit in that unworthy feeling. I should look at why I feel unworthy and When feel you sit in the unworthy feeling, you're just having the treatment over and over again. You're, you're just reinforcing how you were treated. You understand? That's all you're doing. You're just you're just saying you're you're just basically saying how that person treated me I deserved over and over again. That's what you're doing. You'd be far better off getting angry about how you've been treated mm -hmm. than doing that. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. Yep. Very important, you see, a lot, a, lot, a lot of you are doing things like this, creating living in a false belief. Right, from an emotional perspective. And remember, we're talking here about issues of, of love. So we're talking about how can I connect to God when, when I am living in a false belief that's in direct disharmony with God, what God's trying to teach me. <laughs> so every time you sit there and cry about how un unworthy you feel, you're living in a false belief which is in direct disharmony with God's belief about you. Somebody made you feel unworthy. What did they do to you to make you feel unworthy? That's the thing you need to process. They are the things you need to remember. They are the things you need to work your way through. All right, we've, I've got to finish this session now. We're at our 12.40 state. This is our... Uh, so thank you for your questions. We, we, we'll have another set of questions later on this afternoon about change as well. So hopefully we'll engage a similar sort of discussion with that particular session. Um, what we're going to do now is have a 20 minute break. So that'll give you the opportunity to, you know, if you want to have a little short bit of something to eat or something like that, and have a bit longer break this time. We'll be back, if we can come back at two o'clock sharp, we'll be playing the music again, sort of five minutes or more beforehand, just to let you know. Thanks, guys.